Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is my April sewing plans and fabric haul. I have bought new fabric but none of that fabric is destined to be tops so it's all fabric that I'm going to be showing you from my stash. Actually quite a lot of it is already down in the main house in four giant Joanne bags and they are super super heavy and I didn't want to drag them all the way up here so I'm going to be showing you some of the things that I want to make matching tops for because April is going to be the month of tops and before I go any further I'm going to take this cardigan off. Oh it is hot up here. <laughs> so that was the Viang card again. I have the gable top on and then I have my three quarter circle skirt that I made out of my stripy lemon print fabric and I can show it to you like this because thankfully the way that the camera is set up you can't see that I'm flashing you. So actually this is one of the first fabrics that I am going to be making a top from. I have a little bit of this left and I have a little bit of the all over lemon print left and I would like to make a semi fitted crop top that would go with this and when I say crop I want it to come to I want it to just cover the waistband of my skirt but I don't want it to be a tuck inable top because I like the way that it looks when it's kind of like hovering just at the waist so there's there's def still definition at the waist you can still see the smallest part of me but I don't want to expose any tummy or anything like that. I cannot remember the number of this pattern but it's a McCall's pattern, I've traced it out. I have made it once before, I hated the fabric that I'd made it in so I kind of put that one, ended up in the uh, recycling pile. I haven't touched that top since but I have traced it out. I do like the way it looks. I personally will make it sleeveless so it will be a little sleeveless crop top with a button probably a button closure at the back i think that's how it closes i'm thinking with that one as well because i have a little bit of this stripe left i'm thinking i could play around with like blocking a stripe across the top and then having the solid lemons everywhere else because as i say i have a mixture of both of those left i would also like to attempt to make a tie fronted shirt out of some of the all over lemon print that I have as well. If I have enough to do both of those that would be awesome. So that is definitely the first one and I thought of that because I'm wearing the skirt but I have a pile of indie patterns here next to me. All of these are top patterns, all of these are indie patterns. I have a few that are PDFs that I would like to try and get to as well. I'm thinking I could get slightly more done this month because tops are obviously less involved than dresses. Yeah, I have a lot of fabric to work my way through. The first one is the Sewaholic Belcara woven t-shirt. I've actually traced this out, but I haven't made it up yet. I traced this out quite a while ago, so I'm going to have to have a look and see what size I traced because I have a feeling that I might need to adjust it. But I really, really like this. It's a very sort of simple t-shirt looking pattern, but it is weight recommended for lightweight woven fabrics. Cotton voile, lawn, rayon chali, silk chamois, crepe or shirting fabrics. And for view B, which is the one that has little tucks along the shoulder, it does say choose crisp fabrics like cotton lawns or shirtings for best results. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really nice pattern. It's something that I would reach for. I like my cowl neck tops that I've made from a pattern that doesn't is out of print now. I don't wear them as much at the moment because they are slightly tight on my bust. But as you know, I am losing weight, so they are coming back into rotation slowly. So I, I'm looking forward to making this up. And it needs, let's see, I'm gonna say I'm, let's see i'm gonna say i'm that size so it needs now are these yards or yeah these are yards so it needs two yards of 60 inch wide fabric for the size that i need so i have a lot of fabrics in my stash that will this will work for which is awesome next up we have the charm patterns rita blouse and I have seen Jane from Essex make a few of these recently and they look amazing on her and I really need to pull my finger out and make these. These again are good for rayon chali, cotton lawn, batiste, poplin, satin and you can, oh, oh it says if you're feeling up for a more challenging fabric, lightweight silk um, like crepe de chine also would work. Gertie's just released a bishop sleeve extension on her patreon so if you are a member of her patreon you will have the sleeve extension for this pattern and she's made that one up in a lace which looks really really pretty i am looking forward to making this i've seen some people also make these out of a stretch fabric as well which also looks 
awesome and somebody had made one of these from an old band t-shirt and it looked really really cool so I would like some of those. Next we have two patterns from Experimental Space, the Josie and the Evelyn. I think these are both absolutely beautiful and I want to make both of them. Now I have some fabric in my stash and I still have it up here. This is part of my Make 9. It is a, I think it's a rayon of some description. It's from Till the Sun Goes Down. It's got tiny little Siamese, I, to me they're Siamese, I don't know why, but it's got tiny little cats all over it. I want to make either the Evelyn or the Josie blouse with this fabric. Now, I'm going to make wearable muslin of both of these, these ones first. As I say, I have bags and bags full of shorter cuts of fabric, some of which are precious, some of which are not, some of which are wearable muslin fodder, so I'm going to make muslins up of these ones first, see which one I prefer, and then use this beautiful cat fabric to make myself a blouse that's going to be awesome. And this is, I think, the only, it is the only length of fabric I have to show you today, but it is, it's absolutely beautiful, one of my favourites. Really sorry I bought the last of this. As I say it's from Till the Sun Goes Down and she has an amazing selection of fabrics so I will link her shop down below. Andre does beautiful patterns, I have some coming up in a bit, and she does amazing fabric and curates an amazing collection as well. So that's going to be yeah either the Josie or the Evelyn. I'm excited about making both of these. Next we have my Christmas present from Wilson. He bought me the Ariel blouse from Deer and Doe. I think I've said Ariel. I think I've said that correctly. I really like this. I am probably going to make the longer sleeve version, although I do like the little short sleeved one as well. I like that it has some shaping and I like the collar on this. I think this is going to be really fun to make. It has a yoke, so it has colour blocking potential as well. So I think this is going to be a really cool blouse to make up. And again, it doesn't take too much fabric. So yeah, version B is one and a half metres or 2.2 metres of a slightly less wide fabric. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to making this one up and seeing what comes out. Next we have the Ondine sweater, Ondi sweater from Deer and Doe. This was a present from the lovely Alex. It was part of my KB pattern swap. I think it was a summer edition that uh, Alex and I got each other. And she has sent me some fabrics that could work for this. I like the little collar detail on this one. I like the lower neckline as well. I probably wouldn't ever make the short sleeve one because I probably will make this out of like, you know, French terriers and things like that. It takes very little amounts of fabric as well. Just, just over a meter. So yeah, there's this one. And then I have some, the last patterns I actually physically have to show you are from Now and Then Patterns, which is Andre from Till the Sun Goes Down's pattern line. So the first one is the Evelyn blouse and dress. I'm probably not going to make the dress version, although I do kind of like the dress version, but I bought this from the Knitting and Stitching show, the March when it was snowing. I've bought some amazing silk fabric from M. Rosenberg, and I've also bought some, I think it was a peach skin from M. Rosenberg as my wearable muslin fodder for this. I want to make version B with the longer sleeves. The silk I have is slightly a sheer see-through silk so I kind of like the idea of the longer sleeves with that one although I do like the raglan sleeves on this as well. I'll be interested to see how full the skirt is on the dress because that actually might be something that I, I make but like I say I have the fabrics for this one already. I am going to do a sew along for this as well. I did ask Andre and she said I could do sew alongs for any of her patterns anytime which is awesome. This one is going to get made up this month and hopefully in wearable muslin and in silk which should be interesting. And then the last one that I have physically to show you is the Clara blouse from Now and Then Patterns. I believe this is the one that Andre has just turned into a PDF as well. So if you want a, p a print at home PDF, this is the first one that she's offered. And she's also said that if you guys want any other PDFs that she will attempt to turn her other patterns into PDFs as well. I like all of the versions of this. One that's not shown on the front cover, it's got an even longer sleeve. I just think it's really, really beautiful. I like all the double darts for shaping. I like the collar. I really like the, let's see, yes, yeah, see the, the strapless one. I think that's beautiful. I can see myself making a lot of those. And again, this doesn't need too much fabric. So this is perfect for my bags that I have my shorter cuts of fabrics in. I'm really excited about making this up. I think this is gonna look really cool. I can see this being the type of thing that I, I wear quite frequent, frequently with my circle skirts and things and then also 
I can see it being nice not tucked in over skinny trousers and jeans and things. Pedal pushers. I have some denim pedal pushers that I haven't tried on in a while. I wonder if I can get into them now. Yeah, I think it would look really cool over those kinds of things. So I also have patterns like the Jennifer Lauren Hunter tank, which I have made once before. I didn't make it again afterwards because I didn't really like how the ties were finished. I think I've worked out a way that I can line the front pieces so that I don't have to hem the ties because that was my problem with that top is that I loved it. I loved how it looked but I really didn't like the finish on the ties and that was my fault because I, you know I, I doing a narrow rolled hem to pointy points was was not easy I did it to the best of my ability I think that was like four years ago so it'd be interesting to give it another try now but I much rather prefer I much prefer the idea of doing a lining so that it's completely all the raw edges are enclosed and I don't have to hem it I also remember with that one that I had some issues with the neckline and not getting that to sit as flat as I wanted it to so I but then I did use store-bought bias binding rather than handmade bias binding so I might bite the bullet and make myself some bias binding for the neck binding and the armhole binding but we shall see but yeah I love the hunter tank I, I made a made it with some wide leg trousers and wore it as a set and it was really really fun because it was nice to have it interchangeable but it, it did look like a jumpsuit when they were worn together so I can see myself doing that in the future then I have things like the crystal cove cami from itch to stitch the camilla cami from tasuti patterns and the ogden cami from true bias I also have the misty cami top as well so I have four camisole patterns patterns that I've not made. I want to try them all and again they all take very small amounts of fabric. They all should be fairly quick projects to make. I'm excited to work my way through those bags of fabrics that I have down in the main house that are just crying out to be made into tops. So the reason that I'm doing top month is because I have loads and loads and loads of skirts like this which is my 16 panelled chevron circle skirt and I did make a top out of a coordinating fabric but I hated how it looked together and that top there is a sew along for it but I did want to tweak it a little bit to make it a bit more wearable for me I have some of this fabric left I have some of the solid fabric left so again I'd like to make a top that goes with this this is a K facet shell bouquet fabric this is actually the skirt portion of the 8577 it has the giant pockets I love the skirt from this dress so much so I decided to make it as a skirt alone rather than a dress because I thought it would be more wearable. I think I did this three years ago and I haven't worn it ever which is a shame because it is awesome but that's because I don't have anything that goes with the goes with it to to wear it with so I bought some more of this fabric so that I could make myself a sleeveless tie fronted shirt which I am going to do and then I have quite a few of my viscose jerseys this fabric in colors that would match this so I would like to make some short sleeve t-shirts to go with this as well one thing that I don't have is a white button down shirt and I haven't bought a pattern up for a button down shirt but I I don't have one of those and I have some beautiful white rayon down in my stash and I think I need to get one of those made because I have loads of things in in my wardrobe I have a really nice uh, short sleeve jumper that my mum made from some four ply alpaca wool which is beautiful but I find it a little bit itchy to wear right next to my skin it's kind of the sleeves come to about here so what I was thinking was like a white button down collared shirt because it's a v-neck uh, underneath that with the sleeves rolled up to the bottom of where the jumper sleeves come I think that would look really really cool I need to make myself a white button-down shirt this month as well the final fabric that I know I have a little bit left over of is this cotton sateen lemon print from Tilio, and I would like to make I think a tie fronted shirt to go with this as well this is a three quarter circle skirt that I turned into a button down skirt which you can just yeah you can see the buttons there I used Emily Horman's tutorial on how to add a button pocket to a skirt like this and again I will link that down below for you but I have some of that fabric left as well so I have a lot of plans this month as ever I mean I made something like 22 24 items last month in March which you will have seen in my March lookbook which should have gone up yesterday I have lots and lots of plans but I'm hoping that I can get them done and as I say some of the I mean some of these tops are a little bit more involved than others but hopefully they should all be fairly quick projects so I should be able to get a good a good selection of them done wish wish me luck <laughs> so let me know which one of those you are most excited to see I I think 
because I, because I have so many plans for all of them. I think I'm excited about all of them, but I really, really want to get that kitty fabric made up. So I'm very excited to see which one of the experimental space patterns I end up choosing. But yeah, I'm pleased with my selections. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.